research officer Amrita School of Ayurveda to share his thoughts on application of Pariksha, Pratyaksha and Anumana for Vijnana. Sir, please. And our sessions as continuation of the previous sessions. Uh, so, as you have now understood um, the uh, reason for why we are saying that uh, Apta Apta Vachana has to be examined. All these things that uh, you have actually understood, right? <coughs> so, uh, we already understood that uh, Apta and Apta Vachanas are different. Aptas, yes, we do accept, but Apta Vachanas or whatever has been written can be, there can be a lot of blemishes in that. Is it right? So, we have to eliminate those blemishes and then refine it to understand what is the truth behind it. And that is what and that is what we are planning to look by doing the Pariksha. Okay. Uh, we looked at uh, the Apta, Apta Pramana. So, yes, we, go, we get the first hand knowledge of any anything from Apta only, right? Until unless you have something written or something, uh, you know, told for the first time, you will not know or you will not have an information about that, right? So that is all that we actually intend by the uh, term Apta. So, now after getting that knowledge from Apta, that is called as Jnana, right? The first hand information about something is called as Jnana. But our goal is not to just be at Jnana, we have to carry that knowledge to Vijnana. What is the difference between Jnana and Vijnana? Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me what is the difference between Jnana and Vijnana? Hmm? Vishesha Jnanam Vijnanam. Okay. When does some Jnana become Vishesha to you? Correct. When there is Anubhava to it. When there is Anubhava to it, only then it becomes Vijnana. That becomes, which means it has been certified or you yourself have experienced it. When it becomes like that, only then it becomes Vijnana. Until then, it is just theoretical knowledge or textual knowledge. Okay. So, our goal is to look at what is Pariksha and how to make the jnana into vijnana using pratyaksha and anumana. Okay. So these are some of the topics that we will touch upon. I will just briefly touch upon pariksha and then some aspects of pratyaksha pramana and anumana. Okay. Which you have already studied. Okay. So, yes, again, we are coming back to that same uh, diagram. So, here, see, you can see there is two types of knowledge. One is Ukta and Anukta. There are two types of knowledge. So, Ukta is whatever is told in Aptopadesha. So, Aptopadesha, see, we require Pramanas, which is Pratyaksha and Anumana, for two reasons. The one reason is that we have to, we will get the jnana from apta and that jnana has to be converted into vijnana. So, for that we need pramana. That is one reason. You know what is the another reason for which you require the pramanas or pariksha? Pramana 
for anuktartha jnana if something is not told by aapta there are so many things right will you limit your knowledge or will you limit your application only to uh, whatever is told in the text and not do any application or not do any uh, understanding from that for example you all, you all have experienced covid pandemic covid this was not told in our shastra can you get a direct reference or the term covid covid 19 anything right you don't get is it there or do you believe that this was there it was well thought of and it has been documented by our acharyas will you say no 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 covid is not for the first time that we are experiencing covid 19 it has already been documented by ayurveda will you say that no right but you all treated or not you we have seen that covid being treated in ayurveda so many thousands of people have been treated with ayurveda for covid 19 or for that matter any 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 disease which is not told in ayurveda right how do you how do you treat that for example multiple sclerosis is a disease do you get have you heard of this disease called as multiple sclerosis no how many of you have heard of this disease at least heard i am not asking i will not ask you anything further don't worry you have not heard of this term multiple sclerosis at all okay so for you i am telling it is a disease which is autoimmune in nature and uh, it affects the muscle tone it affects the muscle muscle strength and it is progressive in nature you cannot do anything to it once it has come it is many a times from a genetic predisposition that it comes but once it comes then it slowly affects different muscles of the body and the muscles become weak and eventually the patient is not even able to ambulate not even able to move and by that so if this disease you will not find any reference of this disease in ayurveda okay but there are uh, clinicians who very uh, you know we would not say that a complete cure but there are doctors in ayurveda who treat such cases or there are so many diseases how do you do that these are all what nothing but anukta right these are all anukta in nature and even for anukta <coughs> you have to make it into even for something that is anukta you have to handle it right if a patient comes of covid he is sitting right in front of you you cannot just dismiss of you cannot tell the patient sorry this no, this thing is not told in ayurveda you please do, go to an allopathic doctor will you do that right you still have means to treat it how do you do it okay tell me how what is the understanding of covid in ayurveda what's your name hari priya okay how do you understand covid or what have you thought of covid in your mind in terms of ayurveda ha ah symptoms vechittu nokumbo engena aitana thonunnathu ha alla alla adu ed disease aitana correlated nammal marundu kodukkunnathu we are giving medicine for that particular condition right so when you are giving ayurvedic medicine you should have, you should have an understanding as to this may be correlated to something right so i am just asking you how did you or to what disease have you correlated covid to hmm 
ज्वेर सिंपल ज्वेर एकदोष ज्वेर द्विदोष ज्वेर सन्नीपाद ज्वेर विषम ज्वेर आगंत ज्वेर धातुगत ज्वेर आवरण जन्य ज्वेर वाट Can anyone help her? Okay, sorry. So you have just started with Nidanam, it seems. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. So anyway, you would have told, no, you have not understood. That's okay. Okay. Don't worry. Don't be afraid or... Yeah. So uh, there are so many types of Jara. Act we need to act actually correlate this disease to something for us to derive a samprapti. Have you heard of samprapti at least? Samprapti, right? If you have a set of hetu, with the hetu, you construct a samprapti. Hetu, not only hetu, you need to have dosha and dushya. With hetu, you get the idea of dosha. And with Hetu, you get the idea of also the Dushyas. So when you get Dosha and Dushya along with the Hetu, you can build up a Samprapti of itself. But this Samprapti building and the Chikitsa, you will have to have an understanding of based on some rationality. You need to have a rational for You cannot just blindly say this is the samprapti. This is what I feel. No. You need to give a strong reason for why you are saying the samprapti should be like this. The treatment chikitsa should be like this. So that reason comes with what? Comes with pariksha. With pratyeksha and anumana. Understand? And this is the reason why for all the Anukta Vyadhi Chikitsa also, you require Pariksha. Okay. This is the reason why we are doing the Pariksha. So by doing Pariksha, it becomes Vijnana. It becomes Anubhava to you. With the same application, you have applied a logic. You With that logic, you have formulated a Samprapti. With Based on that Samprapti, you have made a Chikitsa Sutra and when you are applying that Chikitsa Sutra to the patient, you are seeing results. So when you are seeing result, you are getting convinced that yes, what Pariksha I applied was right and that is why I am getting results. So then it becomes Vijnana to you because you have Anubhava, right? So the information encountered in daily or professional life may be accurate or inaccurate. Accepting such information without verification can lead to flawed conclusions if the data is incorrect. Data here means any signs and symptoms that you have picked on the patient, from the patient. So therefore it is crucial to evaluate all the information, verify its accuracy, accept what is true and discard what is false. Will you still hold on to whatever is false once you have verified and you see, no, this is wrong? You have to eliminate that, right? And then proceed to draw conclusions. Otherwise, your conclusion will be wrong, right? You have done some mathematical calculation. Okay, you did it very fast and then you derived at an answer. You underlined it. This is the answer. And then you, when you rechecked, you saw, array. I forgot, I didn't calculate this number, something like that. And then you do that correction and then write the correct answer, right? Or will you, no, 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 no. I will accept that only. Will you do that? 
no right so similarly here also you need to eliminate what is wrong only then you get the correct answer so this process of critical evaluation helps to ensure more reliable decision your decision makes all the difference and that is what is called as pariksha <coughs> so there's a beautiful um, shloka in kalidasa not in kalidasa in kalidasa kalidasa is a person it is told by kalidasa what did he tell purana mityeva na chatu sarvam na chapi kavyam navamitya vadyam santah parikshantara bhajante moodah parapratyaneya buddhi which means you should understand this very clearly you should you know ingrain it in your brains i would say just because something is old so this is about kavya that he is saying kalidasa was a poet right so he is talking about kavya okay what he tells just because something is old does not make anything excellent okay we have that perception in our minds somehow uh it comes to our mind that yeah this is old so this will be better sometimes we have that right so he says just because it is old it cannot be considered as excellent or best nor should one should a poem be rejected so he is talking about poem that is why i have mentioned it like that it should be dismissed because it is new the wise praise anything after duly testing for themselves for its merits while fools blindly accept the opinion of others so this is a beautiful thing told by kalidasa for poetry poetry you can tolerate even if there are some flaws any problems poetry is poetry right for me something would be a poem for others it may not sometimes right so that is okay but still even for poetry he says this criticality is required so what about a medical science like ayurveda don't you need it yes yeah so that is why we are doing this process of pariksha so pariksha yes this shloka i think we came across in the morning trivide तस्मिन् ज्ञानम् ज्ञान समुदाये पूर्वम् आप्तोपदेशात् ज्ञानम् ततः प्रत्यक्ष अनुमानाभ्याम् परीक्षोपपद्यते which means you have to examine even though ज्ञाना has been obtained from आप्तोपदेशा it has to be examined with the help of प्रत्यक्ष अनुमानाभ्याम् and one more thing is told by Charaka is परीक्षा कारणों ही कुशला भवंती। तो why do you do परीक्षा? Only a person who does परीक्षा हाँ can become or become an expert। So आप तो बदेशा provides initial information, but our method of परीक्षा allows for an independent examination and verification before acceptance। Okay, so only Information which withstands the pariksha should be accepted, while the other's claim can be discarded even if presented as apta pradesha, apta vakya. And periodical critical re-examination of any system is crucial for its current and free from inaccuracies caused by factors. So, so here, see, there can be various errors that can. That may cause, as discussed in the morning, someone may add something, or while copying itself, there may be errors, right? So this can happen by various factors such as scribal errors due to repeated transmission. See here, even my typing got wrong. It is not scribal; it is scribal. So even here, I got a error. it was a typing error so this can happen even to our 
Shastra, right? Repeated transcription, breaking in tradition, later modification, and societal changes, and advancement in knowledge. Even we are in this era now, in this advanced era. How can we hold on to Ayurveda's old principles of doing long treatments or, you know, so many things are there which are on the verge of outdated. Like, we have not yet considered it officially as outdated, but we very well know this is not fitting to our era. Right? Many things are there. Now we feel, we really feel, Will can this be done? Is it practically possible to do it this way? Right? So many things are there in our Shastra like that. So those things are, are to be modified. We should apply this scrutiny even to Ayurveda as well. Whatever withstands the examination using, using Pariksha can be corrected, correlated with contemporary concepts in modern science. This can be done. And this has to be done is what I propose. And this process of internal refinement is essential and subjecting Ayurveda directly to external scrutiny is a problem. What happens is, when we don't do this exercise, our Ayurvedic fraternity doesn't do this exercise of looking critically at our Shastra. This is done by someone from outside. And when it is done by outside people, we feel the heat because the whole Ayurveda is dismissed as a pseudoscience then. Because they don't know the totality of Ayurveda, they look at it very critically and they find faults which are not even wrong sometimes. And that is why they say whatever is told in Ayurveda is incorrect. This is what happens with Ayurveda when we don't do or we are not active. Then is there a, so is it, uh, who, whose fault is this? It is our fault. We need to be proactive to all these changes and try to update our science. Otherwise, like um, uh, in the morning Ramanohar sir said, people like Abby Philip, you know about Dr. Abby Philip? Okay, please Google the liver doc you can get more information about him. The liver doc. He is famous in social media as the liver doc. Okay? This exercise you can do it independently and then you will know what he is meaning, what he is saying and what he has told about Ayurveda. Okay. So anyway, I will tell you one more thing. So having looked at, having considered as ap, or we have looked at Apta, Aptopadesha. So, Aptopadesha contains, contains three types of things. What are the three things you know? One is Tarkya. Tarkya means theoretical or and debatable concepts open to logical analysis and discussion. So, Aptopadesha is divided into three types or Aptopadesha is of you can divide the whole content into three types. One is Tarkya. Tarkya means theoretical knowledge which is open to debate and sometimes this may lead to no conclusion at all. Like, can you give me example of Tarkya? We heard it in the morning. Huh? Very good. Punar Janma. This debate will not reach anywhere. Unless you die, you will not know, you don't know. When you yourself die, you yourself experience what is going to happen to me after death. Only then you will be convinced. Otherwise, who has come back after death to tell you, oh, this is what happened to me after death? No one, right? So you don't have a very rigorous or very strong proof to tell about it. That is why it is called as Tarkya. Yes, you may have postulations about it, all those things, but still there is no strong evidence about Punarjanma. So there are many things about Ayurveda also, Ayurvedic concepts also like that. So that is Tarkya. Then there is Drishya. Drishya is 
is very very evident to you right in front of you so just by looking at that you can verify for yourself by pratyaksha pramana and say this is how it is that is drishya and there is something called as atindriya also and drishya also includes something all the prama may, may not be visible to you sometimes some things are not visible direct in front of your eyes but when you apply the pariksha like pratyaksha and anumana and yukti it may become clear even that is considered to be drishya okay that is included in the drishya but atindriya there is something called as atindriya now which are even mentioned sometimes as atindriya in our shastra which you which is beyond our perception which is beyond our pancha gnanendriyas you cannot perceive it through pancha gnanendriyas but still these things are mentioned in our shastra for such knowledge you have only one way what is that one way to go by aptavakya so when something is atindriya when something is beyond our indriyas and still mentioned in apta you have only one way to go that is to consider it as apta vakya and because with pariksha you cannot establish it or with pariksha you cannot examine it so that is why it is called as atindriya so it is crucial not to conflate these categories what happens is we mix them abruptly we don't know what is drishya we don't know what is tarkya what is atindriya and that is why we have a lot of confusion so once this is divided no it is very easy for us to evaluate our shastra so this can be a preliminary step by which we can proceed so it is crucial to conflate these categories particularly by elevating tarkya topics to the status of unquestionable truths under the guise of arsha so what happens is uh, sometimes we say it is already tarkya but we say um, you know it is arsha and we believe it cannot or um, this is what happens when we are very hardcore believers no who are not um, who cannot be subjected to any kind of um, you cannot change their mind that time this happens so we actually uh, such people actually elevate the topics which are falling under tarkya to arsha they say it is arsha it is directly told by apta so we should 100% believe in it that cannot be done that should not be done okay so this misclassification has hindered the process and critical examination of ayurvedic principles we'll see some of the yeah we have already seen some of them right angula when something is directly right in front of your eyes you yourself examined it right how many uh, did you get how many bones ah 14 14 right and still we would like to stick for 30 which is wrong right <coughs> so this also is a shloka which tells about that we have already seen ramana sir already discussed about it nacha pratyaksha viro pratyaksha virodhe shrute pramanyam apitu pratyaksha anugrahitaya shrute pramanyam nahi shruti shatam api shito agni idi bhruvan pramanam bhavati pratyaksha virodhartha pratipadika shrute arthavad atteva atvena neya natu pramanyena so which says if something is very very clear in front of your eyes then don't go by shruti even if the shruti say 100 times the otherwise 
don't have to believe it because apta uh, vachana has to be considered the ultimate only when you cannot examine it if you can examine that then you don't have to consider it always as apta vakya so vina tarkena ya siddhir edircha siddhireva sa so there is even charkacharya has told you would have treated there are you would have seen many people uh, who are uh, very good at practice okay may, there may be people who are near to your house also who are very good at practice they may be having a roaring practice about 50 70 patients every day coming to them uh, some may be traditional vaidyas may be there and all if you go and ask uh, for this disease what what do you me- what medicine do you give they say i give this medicine you ask them why why is this happening why do you give this med- don't ask any questions i give this and i get i get results they may say like that or sometimes they may say you come to me only for this disease i treat only this you don't have to come for any other so if such people are there who don't even know the rationale behind the treatment but they are treating in such cases charkacharya says it should be considered as yadrichha siddhi and not the actual siddhi yadrichha siddhi means it is just the chance effect chance success that they are getting that can even be got by a quack you don't even have to qualify will you go to a quack what is the difference between a quack and a actual professional doctor the only difference is yeah the actual doctor has studied the science and then he is treating quack is also treating but he has not studied the science so he may be following uh, he may he would have stayed with the doctor for 25 years or so and 26th year he started practicing right will you go to him because he is also getting result but that result is chance that is dangerous so even charkacharya says if you don't apply pramana and if you have got success if you are not able to tell the reasons behind your prescription the rationale behind your prescription then even that has to be dismissed just as yadrcha siddhi and yes we do pariksha we do examination it is not that we should stop at pariksha examination and that is not the ultimate goal we do the pariksha for samskarana and yugana rupi karana there are three things that we have to follow pariksha okay pariksha is applying pratyaksha and anumana and yukti and then critically evaluating existing knowledge distinguish between what is grahya and tyajya and take only nischita phalavat vijnanoba padakatvam so only when you are convinced that this is 100% right this will give you 100% uh, result only then accept that and rest of it you can eliminate by the paramarsha okay and then that is not enough that is still in theory form that has to be converted into a samskara or it has to be refined okay only when you refine expand or concise that principle sometimes uh, when a siddhanta is told that so that knowledge whatever you have examined with the pariksha that has to be free from all the tantra doshas all those things has to be eliminated and then it has to be refined and tuned accepted and all the traditional concepts has to be 
in contemporary understanding so you whatever knowledge that you have got it should not be uh, like uh, you are not able to understand it should be in a form which can be understood and yugaanu rupi karana which means it should suit to the real time or this time how how can you use this knowledge it should be modified like we have done a lot of modifications in our shastras also can you tell any of yugaanu rupi karana in ayurveda there are so many yugaanu rupi karanas that has happened can you give vasti what yugaanu rupa has happened the bladder was used very good so earlier days the name vasti has come from the use of basti which is the bladder of goat right so that nowadays nobody uses will you stick on to that name yeah the name of this procedure is basti so i will use only bladder i will not use will you do that it is utter foolishness right similarly you have to modify it according to time so there are many things even the dosage forms medicines right you have uh, kupi kashayam now bottle kashayam do you have the reference of bottle kashayam in ayurveda any text have you seen but we prescribe only bottle text um, bottle uh, kashayas nowadays no there are so many kashayam tablets available nowadays is there a reference of this so these are all modifications this is nothing but yuganurupi karana which is very much required so first step is to transform this data into testable form so how do you do the pariksha you cannot just do a pariksha on something you need to have a proper statement on which which is in the form of a testable statement so based on that abstract a concrete variable hypothesis has to be made and with the use of pramanas this has to be <coughs> tested rigorously and that can be done by so uh, here when you do this you can consider it as, it as vishaya the subject topic as such so uh, in research we have something called as uh research area research topic like that so that is called as vishaya here so research topic is there with from the research topic you make a research question and that research question you have a purav paksha you means you need to you need to look at all the possibilities which are against it and you also have to state that so this is the preliminary objection or the presentation of the opposing view you have to see all the opposing view to the statement that you have made in scientific terminology it is comparable to the null hypothesis it is not directly the null hypothesis but you can correlate it to almost near to null hypothesis <coughs> then when you have formulated a research question you actually say okay this is what i expect by doing this experiment or by doing this study this is the result that i expect right when you are doing a clinical trial for example you know about clinical trial no have you heard of clinical trial and all a study when you are introducing a new medicine you do a clinical trial on a on that medicine right you conduct clinical trial only when it gets established with that clinical trial then you bring it to the market so you have a hypothesis in mind when you are doing this in the trial right you say this medicine is likely to do this action this likely to is called as uttaram and then after applying that 
when you are doing the uh, experiment itself you get a result and that result has to be considered as nirnaya okay so now we will come to pratyaksha pramana so pratyaksha pramana is very short this is this would be uh, hands on so pratyaksha pramana is referred to direct perception and whatever is grahya through our indriya is considered as pratyaksha okay so there are many types of pratyaksha savikalpa pratyaksha and nirvikalpa ka pratyaksha this you have studied no in padartha vigyana you know this no and types of savikalpa pratyaksha are laukika and alaukika and laukika are of again six types these are very confusing right one of the toughest topics in padartha vigyana right this is samyoga sannikarsha samyukta samvaya sannikarsha this is nothing but what you know different levels of pramana that we have see something that you can see directly right in front of you in everything you can feel it you can touch it you can see that shape everything then it becomes what look at the description and tell me when you have complete evidence of a particular thing right in front of you it is called as samyukta samaveta samavaya sannikarsha is it no this you have studied actually you have samyoga sannikarsha you have samyukta samavaya sannikarsha i gave you a clue can anyone tell or will it come in alokika pratyaksha when something is there right in front of you will it no right yeah is it the cement it is what is arthava arthava is menstrual blood right so does menstrual blood have any role to play in conception We have studied modern science also. No? This does uh, menstrual play, menstrual blood play any role in conception? No, right? It is only in the absence of fertilization that the corpus luteum and the sheds off as. Right. So, but we are calling it as. If you look at this description, it is called arthur. So, don't we have to modify this concept? We still say so. It would be better to tell it as we have come across this word. This is also there. So in this context, the term pushpa would be appropriate than arthur, right? What they have meant in that context is actually the ovum, no? Not the blood. Is it the menstrual blood that they have mentioned? That they are meaning? Can that practically be possible? 
No. So, is it actually Pushpa? Because Pushpa is something that is very much, or if you say, uh, very much close to the understanding of Boma. Right? So, if why can't we have a modification of this? So, when we analyze this context, when we analyze this scenario, when we compare it to the modern concepts, everything, we got a clarity that it is not the Atava, but it is the Pushpa or Ovam, and it can be better called as Pushpa. This is our concept. Why can't we have this version? This is all that we are saying. Understand? We should modify such I tell you one more thing. Uh, when you study about uh, Sushruta, no? in Sushruta, Shalya, there is a context of uh, different types of Shalya, foreign objects in the body. So there are Pijip, Gita Shalya, all those things. So for all these, there are different treatments told. You know, one treatment told in Shalya, to remove that Shalya is what you know. If an arrow has gone into the body, one procedure told is to tie that arrow to a horse saddle, to a horse, uh, what is it, that, bar and make the horse jump. So with that force when the horse jumps, the shalya will come out. Now if you start teaching this out, will you do this now? To take out the shalya? Why do you need that in your shastra? So this is when, so this is Yuga Nuruti Karma, example of Yuga Nuruti. We are not saying this is not possible, we are not saying this is wrong. We are just saying, if this is not applicable today, if this is not being practiced today, why do you even have to keep this in the Let us maintain a different edition which was made there. But let us have a Udana Rupa version also, which is most practical. This is all that we are saying. Again, we have Anumana Pramana, which is the last topic that I am going to touch on. So, what is Anumana? Yeah. So, when we don't have a direct perception from Pratyaksha, you also use the help of Anumana to understand. So, again, that is of three types Puruvavat, Sheshavat, and Samaneto. This is also learned by you, right? What is Purvavat? Purvavat means referring to a future effect based on past experience. This is how it happened. So yes, it will be. So you are looking at the cause and then inferring the effect. That is Purvavat. What is Sheshavat? Sorry, you are looking at the effect and inferring the that is the Purvavat. Sheshavat is inferring the cause and from the effect. So, this looks like this. So, maybe this phenomenon would have happened. That is why it is like this. Okay. And Sama Neto Dishra. It means inferring from the general correlation. So, this can be better understood if you put it in this perspective. That is, Prospective, retrospective, and cross-sectional. These are some of the study designs and research that we use. So, Purvavat means nothing but prospectively, you are doing it and seeing the effect. Okay. And Sheshavat is retrospectively, which has already happened now, we are collecting the data and evaluating. So, this is also an Anumana. It is not right in front of you. Samana to Krishna is cross-sectional, which means I give you examples of this. So, uh, a patient presents with a sore throat, fever, swollen, throat, 
And based on past experiences in similar cases, the doctor infers that the patient has likely a strep throat and orders a strep placement control. And what happens? In this case, the doctor is using the past experience because he has seen such cases happening. That is why he ordered for this strep test. Right? It is from past experience. So this is because of the experience that lies that, that Anuvana gave. That is the application of Anuvana. But here in Sheshama what happens is the patient is admitted in emergency room with severe abnormality in all the activities. And upon examination the doctor finds an inflamed appendix. So when the appendix is visible right in front of you, what do you infer from that? The doctor infers that symptoms that pass this are because of appendicitis. So there has been an inflammation process which has been happening, the effect of which is inflamed appendix that you are seeing now. That is it. The third one is the new virus is discovered that causes respiratory symptoms. Although it has still been directly observed in humans yet, based on its genetic similarity to other respiratory viruses, doctor may infer that likely uh, to spread through respiratory droplets and then when predictions like mask wearing and social distancing. This is what actually happened in COVID also, right? When we encountered it for the first time, this is what we did. This is process. So this is all based on other experiences. We infer that this is likely going to happen in this case also. Understand? And here we use some other tools such as Pancha Vyava Vakya. So having known about the Pratyaksha and Anumata, we use this Pancha Vyava Vakya to have a difference. What is that? Pratyaksha is there, Hetu is there, Udharana is there, Sukhana is there, Yoga is there. But these are all based on what? Nothing but our Pariksha. Okay. Pratikya is just stating a statement. Then Hetu is you are bringing up all the reasons for that statement. And Udharana is you are stating example. On what basis are you stating example? Based on Pratikya and Anuman only. Right? Then Upanaya. When you are trying to apply that principle with that example, you are seeing something happen. When you get that, then you make the final Lidhuvana stating this is how it is. So these are some of the methods that you can use with the help of Pratyaksha and Anumana to arrive at conclusions. Okay, and this has to be done for each and every thing. So now I want you to give me one example. One example I told you, Pratyaksha. So tell me, Admin Jarna Shakya Parikshayata. In this, what is the Anumana that you are applying? This is there, no? Do you know what is Admin Jarna Shakya Parikshayata? No. You know Jatana Admin? So when you are examining a patient, no? Patient will never tell you my Agni is low, my Agni is poor. What will patient tell like that? What will patient tell? I am hungry. Oh sorry, I am feeling less hunger. I am feeling more hunger. This is what they said. But based on that statement, you are inferring what? The state of Agni in that patient. Right? But these are all examples of what? Again, Bala, Jaya, you tell the patient, you tell the patients to do treadmill test, no? Treadmill, have you heard of treadmill test? In heart patients and all you do that. To evaluate the cardiac efficiency. When you make the patient walk on that treadmill, you see the capacity, this endurance. And based on that, you decide if he is having Bala or not. Right? Similarly, 
Now I want you to give me some examples on use of animal. Just two, three, four minutes. Like this. So that I get the inference that you have understood. Can you give me? Yes, can you give a try? You can help her. discoloration at some place, she says you should infer, you get, you understand by Anumana that there is Vata Prithi. This is a good example. Very good. Similarly, can you give? Thank you. 